I'm deeply offended, Steve. I tell you something. Your mum's so fat, when she goes to McDonald's, they don't even ask her if she wants to go large. They just do do it large. Oh! When the pimp's in the crib, ma, drop it in the heart. How are you doing, everybody? I am Kev Ashford, and this is the not world famous. Oh, yes, read it and weep, and let's push it down. Oh, I swear to God, these effects are off the scale. Hope everybody is all right. I'm sure you are. If you're not, then I'm really sorry. If I can be of any assistance, let me me no. So the World Cup is in full flow now. I've had a good chance to have a look at certain teams and that. Been a bit disappointed with the, the so-called bigger teams, but I think that makes it a bit more interesting, doesn't it? I did tip Germany at the start. I know they got beat in the first game. Uh, I suppose if now, if I was going to put my money where my mouth was, I'd probably go in there now because you'd probably get better odds. I still think they'll win it. That's Kev's prediction, if you wanted to know. And if you didn't, then I'm really sorry about saying that. In other Manchester United related news, Fred is a red. Fred the red. Right said Fred. Whatever you want to say. All the shit puns that have been used in all the, the media. But it's good to know that he is in the bag. We've actually got him. Seems like a Mourinho type player. Box to box midfielder. I did say the other week. I'd be lying if I said I'd watched him loads of times. And I've probably seen as much as the majority of United fans, which is clips on YouTube. And like I said the other week, Anderson looked a world beater on YouTube. Look how that one turned out. But yeah, I'm enjoying the World Cup. I think it's going well. Up to now, at the point of this video, there's not been a nil-nil draw, which is quite surprising because the first games you think are always a bit edgy and that. But hopefully United can conduct more transfer business after the World Cup. I can't see much going on until certain teams start getting eliminated. <laughs> How shit were Argentina the other night, eh? Messi, where is he? He was dog shit, wasn't he? I think that goes to show as well the big Messi-Ronaldo debate. I have always been in the Messi camp, mate. You're not actually in it, but, you know, I've always said that Messi's technically better than that. But you look at the way that Ronaldo... I mean, Portugal aren't a great team from what I've seen. It's just because they got Ronaldo. They're that good. Look at Gareth Bale. You know what he did for Wales individually. They're just that great. But Messi, what he just does not seem to do it for Argentina. I can't get my head around it. But Ronaldo, he steps up to the plate and carries him. Bit like Maradona did, you know, when he for Argentina and that. But Messi, yeah, a bit of a shocker, really. I still have him at Old Trafford like instead of Fellaini. Anyway, let me tell you what's coming up very quickly in this week's show. First of all, we'll do, talking of Fellaini, we'll do Fellaini watch. Elbows, red cards, passes off the pitch, passes into thin air. Oh, we will then do the big Van Cam debate. If you don't want to play for United, then sling your hook. Plenty of cockstrokers out there, so the next part will be cockstroker of the week. Or did he think that everybody was going to find this hilarious? You know, it, it really is not funny. <coughs> and then we will end with your comments, chance for you lot to have your say. So I pretty much had my little say at the start about the World Cup and that. If you want to get commenting, drop a like on the video, all that shit. Just do it. You know it makes sense. Otherwise, I will hunt you down and some Chinese burns are going to get ripped out. And you do not want that. You don't want Big Kev on your back, yeah? Take that as a threat. Anyway, let's start the show with Fellaini Watch. He's a weird and wonderful character, so it's worth having a look at what people have said about him. And maybe he's done something. I don't know. I'll find out now when I tell you. This is... Yeah, we're going into Fellaini Watch. Some say that his breath smells of dog shit. And that in certain parts of Belgium, he's actually considered as the devil. All that we know is... He's called Fellaini. Big ball in, here's the big man Fellaini! Teat! Fellaini, oh what a man. I'm Kev Ashford, I drive a van. This is Fellaini Watch. This is where we look at what the big bushy-haired 
tit has been up to and not really that much but last week I did tell you that ex Arsenal legend Robert Perez said that Arsenal should sign amazing Fellaini <laughs> amazing do one dickhead anyway I put you to bed last week Whoosh. Uh, I had my say on Perez saying that Fellaini was amazing this week the uh, Arsenal, ex-Arsenal brigade are definitely in full flow and they're feeling the Fellaini signing or the probable or whatever, you know, it might happen. Lee Dixon, an ex-Arsenal player, has come out and said that Marouan Fellaini offers Arsenal something different. He certainly does sunshine. He'll offer you a load of shit fuckery, elbows, red cards, passes off the pitch, passes into thin air to no one. That's what he'll add. But... Lee Dixon tried backing it up by saying that, you know, it's kind of no-brainer and he's on a free transfer. I mean, as far as I'm aware, Emil Heskey is on a free transfer. So if you want him, go and get him and big him up. Say he's amazing. Say he's on a free transfer. It's a no-brainer. It's absolute dog shit. But the scary thing is, Kev's had a dream this week and I've got this suspicion the fact that Fellaini's not announced before the World Cup, he's actually leaving United. He's not said where he's going, obviously because nobody is interested in him. But I'm getting this feeling deep down that after this World Cup, Fellaini's going to announce that he's signed a two-year extension at Man United. I've got no inside information, so don't start, you know, banging on about that. You know, who's your source and that. The only sources I use, man, are barbecue and ketchup, and that's about as far as it goes. But it's just a feeling that bushy hair bastard is going to be with us next season at Man United. Him and Fred, you know, patrolling the midfield, for fuck's sake. That's Fellaini watch. Ooh, that was Fellaini watch. I don't know why my voice just went like that. I'll just get back to talking normal. That's Fellaini Watch. Get comment in. Do whatever you want. I always say it. Share the video would be great or anything. Right, get, get away from that now. Next up, we're going to fly into the big Van Cam debate. This week, I was going to tell you what it was about. Do you know what? I'll do it in the next bit. Make sure you get involved in the poll as well. Cast your vote. Why wouldn't you? This is the big Van Cam debate. The big Van Cam debate. Okay then, so this is the big Van Cam debate, but first of all, let me tell you the result of last week's poll that loads of people got involved in. The question was simple, it was a kind of hypothetical one, but it was, who would you prefer to keep, Paul Pogba or Anthony Martial? As always, there's no sitting on the fence, it was a simple yes or no. Now I thought this one would be really close, and to my surprise, it was pretty much a landslide. 68% would prefer to keep Paul Pogba. Pretty interesting. What I would say is, I think a lot of people that voted on that might have been swayed by the comments that Martial's agent made and maybe going down the road of thinking, do you know what? If you don't want to play for United, then sling your hook. So maybe that's where the voting went on that one. But still an interesting one for the big Van Cam debate. So make sure you get involved in this week's one this week i am looking at jack wilshire now i know what you're thinking kev dangerous territory and all that but jack wilshire has announced that he will be leaving uh, arsenal at the end of the month apparently he wants to play football and that which is fair enough there's one thing that does me add in with jack wilshire it's jack wilshire he is a bit of a dick off the field and all that comes across as a bit of a cocky twat and that but in a footballer you don't mind that and what I will say is Arsenal fans are kind of turning now that Wilsh has decided to go they're all going he's overrated you know he's a bit part player yeah he does have his injury problems but Jack Wilshire for me, I mean, it wasn't long ago that people were banging on he's the next Paul Gascoigne. And personally, I actually do think he should have gone to Russia as part of the England team. Again, I know he's had his injury problems, but he's a player that can unlock defences, play a killer pass, and he has got that tenacious kind of drive where he will get stuck in. It is the injury problems, it's the big one for me, but the question this week is going to be, as Manchester United fans out there watching this, would you take Jack Wilshire on a free transfer? It's a simple yes or a no. There is no sitting on the fence. If you sit up there, you look like a right dick. Just make a decision. Yes or no. 
the poll is running make sure you get involved my views on this really are i really think Mourinho's serious about enforcing and making that midfield group stronger and wilshire wants to come if he can promise him and say listen you prove to me that you're over your injury problems prove to me that you're worth a place in the man united team come on over man you know it's a free transfer he's 26 years old we're not signing somebody who's 36 and past it this is a lad who's not even hit the prime of his career could he do that at old trafford in a better team you know because we're better than arsenal yeah <laughs> like that so anyway get involved simple yes or no would you take jack wilshire on a free transfer i will let you know the result of the poll next week nice one do the dad don't do that the Big Van Cam debate! <laughs> That's not what I heard, Steve, you dirty dog! That was the Big Van Cam debate. Make sure that you get involved in that as always. And next up, we're going to fly straight in to Cockstroker of the Week. There's loads of them out there. People are just making it easy for Kev to compile, you know, top fours, top fives, whatever it is, there's always someone out there who's been an absolute bell end. And this week is certainly no different. Let's get in. I've got a top four this week. It is Cockstroker of the Week. Cockstroker of the Week. Hairy armpits. Here we go again. It is that time of the week where I do a little thing called Cockstroker of the Week. Anybody that doesn't know exactly what that means, take into consideration it used to be called Wanker of the Week and you won't go far wrong. It's the same kind of thing. You know what I'm saying. Got a top four this week and coming in straight at number four is the referee who refereed the match uh, Portugal against Morocco. Now, uh, Watford player... Uh, Nordin Amberat, I think I got that one boxed off. Uh, he has claimed that the referee of the match, who was Mark Geiger, uh, actually asked for Ronaldo's shirt at half time. <laughs> now, I've never heard of this. I really haven't. Referees asking for players' shirts even during the game. FIFA surely have to look into this. That's an absolute joke. I'm not a big fan of players exchanging shirts anyway, and especially players that exchange shirts at half time. I've seen that up and down the years. Some right dickheads have done that. But a referee asking Ronaldo for his shirt. Oh my God. And for that reason, Mark Geiger, you're number four. Coming in at number three is this American commentator who was commentating on the Argentina against Iceland match. It ended one all, but the Americans have this weird way of spinning things, you know, soccer, all that shit. Anyway, this American commentator said this. Apparently, Iceland won the game one all. Those Americans, eh? What are they like? What a douchebag. And for that reason, he, I don't know what his name is, but he is a douchebag. He's number three. Roaring in, steaming in at number two is Phil Neville. Phil Neville, everybody remembers Phil Neville, the man that used to do stepovers. For no apparent reason, he was a defender. He was half decent as a footballer, did a good job for United. But goddamn, as a pundit, he is absolute dog shit. You just put him in the category with... I mean, imagine him, Owen Hargreaves and Michael Owen on a night out. I'd be like, no, thank you, man. I'm staying at home and I'm washing my hair and I'm going to bed because that would be better crack. But this one's come out from the Uruguay game and Phil Neville is paid... Probably great money by the BBC to be a pundit and give his view. The least he could do is do a bit of research. And you know what I'm talking about when I tell you. You do your research. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. That's what the wise Chinese man once told me. But during the Uruguay match, Phil Neville and his words of wisdom, this is what he come out with. Phil Neville said... They just want to make sure they advance further than they have ever done before this is about uruguay uruguay who have actually won the world cup twice so how the fuck could they progress any further than actually winning the bastard thing twice phil do your research sunshine you're number two 
Okie dokie, so it's been a tough one this week trying to put them all in some kind of order, but for me, number one just stands out and picks himself as being the ultimate cockstroker of the week. It is Lord Alan Sugar, and yes it is for that tweet. And if you've not seen it, then what are you actually at? You know, you surely you would have seen it on Twitter, even in the news. You need to know what's going on in the world, if not. Watch the news, for Christ's sake. Anyway, Lord Alan Sugar thought it would be hilarious and a bit of a joke to basically tweet out a picture of the Senegal team uh, below it. He's put some uh, items that the people on the beaches of Marbella are selling that. You know what I mean. We're talking sunglasses, snide Louis Vuitton bags, all that kind of fajazzle. I don't know why I've just said for Jazzle. I've never said it in my life. I've just said it twice in the last sort of five seconds. But anyway, he thought by putting this, and here is the tweet. He put, I recognise some of these guys from the beach in Marbella. Multitasking, res resourceful chaps. Uh, I just, I mean, when I heard about this, I'd, I honestly gasped. I, I was one of them when I seen it. He's dug himself a hole. He then goes on to say that everybody's going over the top about it. They're not going over the top. For me, this is absolute downright casual racism. And you can see why black people would get really, really annoyed about this. And somebody like uh, Lord Alan Sugar should be, you know, he's, he's putting this out to millions of followers. Now, did he think that everybody was going to find this hilarious? You know, it, it really is not funny. There's no place for racism. It's 2018, for Christ's sake. He's later deleted the tweet. He's admitted, you know, he's made a mistake and that. But has he, does he actually realise what he's done? Or is it just because of the public reaction? Because he did tweet to say that everybody had gone over the top. For me, this is, like I said, casual racism. There's no place for it in 2018. And for this... Cockstroker of the week. Lord Alan Sugar, you have got it. I've always wanted to say this now as well. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I heard, Steve, you dirty dog. That was the big Van Cam debate. Make sure that you get involved in that as always. And next up, we're going to fly straight in to Cockstroker of the week. There's loads of them out there. People are just making it easy for Kev to compile, you know, top fours, top fives, whatever it is, there's always someone out there who's been an absolute bell end. And this week is certainly no different. Let's get in. I've got a top four this week. It is Cockstroker of the Week. Cockstroker of the Week. The bottom. That was Cockstroker of the Week. Do you agree with that? That was very difficult this week. But for me, Lord Sugar has to get it. And I tell you, another Bellend who very nearly got in. His mate, Piers Morgan, who's backed him up saying he's not a racist and all that. Down with that kind of shit. Right, we're coming to the end now. What we do next is your comments. It's a look at what you shower of bastards have had to say. Mainly probably lookalikes giving Kev shit. But hopefully there's some decent questions in there that could be due with football. I said it last week. For 30 minutes every Friday, you've got my undivided attention, my football knowledge. So ask me good questions instead of shit ones. Here's your comments. Rubber dub dub, three men in a tub. Sweating me tits off, man. Woo! Right, it is time for your comments. First in was David Grace who said, Kev, I'm getting splinters this week. I can't answer Pogba or Martial. I want to keep them both. So do I, sister. So do I. It was a good question, I thought. Many said, or the majority said they wanted to keep Pogba, but tough question. Uh, and Pogba won it. Dave Bertwistle, who's a bit of a Van Cam legend himself, said, my life is now complete. Cockstroker of the week. Cheers, Kev. Not a bother, mate. That's because... He thought that it was actually Patrice Evra uh, collecting glasses by the pool in Malta when I was on my holidays. <laughs> Dickhead. Andrew Boyce said, get this channel up the rankings, people. Kev uh, deserves it. Nice one, mate. Got to get me up the rankings. I'm falling behind now. I don't seem to be moving on subscribers. My views aren't going up. What's the point of doing it? Because I love it. Clay Buzz said, Antoine Guizman for Cockstroker of the Week. 
not a bad one that he is a bit of a, a cock stroker because the way he's just kept us all you know waiting on his every word who does he think he is you know at half eight tonight i will announce where i'm going i'm staying at madrid oh nice one mate dickhead viking red said another classic show kev thank god you're about mate i hope you make it big mate i'm spreading the word you are the best show on youtube this is your the alarm bell should be ringing now this is your you know yeah I'm gonna spread the word. Just share it for Christ's sake. Get on the Facebook page, like it, share it with the Facebook community, whatever. Nick McCartan said, for there to be a Sir Kenny Dog Leash and yet only a Harry Gregg MBE is an absolute disgrace. How many burning planes has Sir Kenny ran into to save people's lives? This is a fantastic point. I said last week, I can't believe that the Queen is gonna be knighting, you know, Kenny Dalgleish as Sir Kenny Dalgleish. When you look at somebody like Harry Gregg and what he did at the Munich Air disaster, like Nick McCartan, spot on, spot on. You know, put his life before others, ran into a burning plane to pull people out and actually save lives and yet, you know, he doesn't get a knighthood. No, you know, not a recommendation. Nothing to honour exactly what he did that day. Brilliant comment, that. That's comment of the week. Really is. Uh, Alex Rudd said, Oh yeah, tomorrow is my birthday, June the 16th. Uh, it will be a week late, but shout me out if you're asked. I am asked, mate. A nice one for watching, Sunshine. Happy mofo birthday to you. And thanks for watching. John Vallendingham, who is the king of the comment section. We all know John. He said, Kev, I want to be sedated after watching the Queen. Yes, the Queen being voted cockstroker of the week, or as we say in America, wanker of the week. I mean, come on, man, the Queen of England. Oh, the shame of it. I'm so depressed. Do not be depressed. Going back to the same point, the Queen of England got cockstroker of the week for deciding to honour Sir Kenny Dalgleish, who is a racist. He wore a Suarez shirt and he stood by Suarez. Don't get me started on that. Uh, Robert Ingram said you're much better looking than Lovren. That was because last week's lookalike was of Lovren. Here we go. This is somebody who's been prodding me with a cattle stick in the comments section for weeks. And I must say, the comments are always absolutely bang on. And your, t your moment in the spotlight on Van Cam has come. I love this game. I'm not just saying that because Patrice ever does. That's because the name of the YouTube account is I love this game. Uh, he said, I'm not a stroker, but defo not a bum kisser boy. I've gave you some of the finest and still not a shout out. But cut stroker of the week, beggars make it. Mate, you just got it. Your life's complete. And what a Friday. Right, Dave Burt Whistle uh, said, Kev looks thrilled to have met his long lost brother. Cheeky bastard! How many times am I going to get compared to Barry Bastard Chuckle? I don't find it funny. I'm sure everybody else does, but it's not. Do you know what? Let me just have a moment to myself. Crying out loud. Bullet whistle, you bastard! Right, I have really. I swear to God, I lost the plot for a minute there. What I will say, and this proves how much of a decent man that Kev is, yeah? I've got Burt Whistle back in the lookalikes, taking the piss big time, which I'm clearly not happy about, and I'm not. It pissed me off big time, to be honest. But, did have a message from him, and his daughter, Lucy, it was her birthday on the 14th. So, I will say, happy birthday, Lucy. And, do you know what? I really feel sorry for you. Having such a knobhead of a dad. Dave Burt Whistle. Do you know what I mean? I'm only joking. Hope you had a really good birthday. Obviously, this was, what, a week ago or so ago. Uh, but that just shows how much of a knobhead your dad is. And that's why he was in Cockstroke of the Week last week. Because he gets in such a week after and says, Can you wish, you know, my daughter a happy birthday for last week? You know, the man's well behind times. Give him a good boot up the arse, Lucy, for me. Give him a Chinese burn. And give him one of them Kung Fu Chop things to the Adam's Apple. Because he won't be breathing for maybe 30 seconds or so it won't threaten his life but at least it'll shut him up anyway that's the end of van cam thank you to everyone who has commented right uh get in touch all the usual shit please make sure you spread the word because i've tried doing it and it's not happening 
I'm joking, of course. I'm not really arsed. Make sure you have a top weekend. Enjoy the football. Three games a day. This is what it's all about, even though I'm not really particularly arsed and supporting anyone because England do me head in. But, uh, yeah, like I said, get in touch on that. Look after yourselves this weekend and enjoy the World Cup. See you next week. Same time, same place. Kev Van Cam, yeah.